Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video lecture, we will be solving this problem exclusive time of functions, which is a lead code medium problem. In this problem, we are given a single threaded CPU. So what do we have in a single threaded CPU? We execute a program which contains n functions. Each function has a unique ID and they are labeled from 0 to n minus 1. Function calls are stored in a call stack. So we know about a call stack. Whenever a function is called, a call stack is, is initiated with the, with the function call. And when a function call starts, its ID is pushed into the stack. While when the function call ends, its ID is popped off the stack. The function whose ID is at the top of the stack is the current function being executed. So each time a function starts or ends, we write a log with the ID, whether it started or ended and the timestamp. So whenever a function starts or it ends, we have a corresponding log for that. So what does that log contains? So in this problem, we are given that list of logs where each element in the logs array represents the log message formatted as a string. The string contains the function ID. The second element contains whether the function starts or ends. And the third element contains the timestamp when the function ends or it starts. For example, 0 colon starts colon 3. That means a function call which has a ID 0 started at the beginning of timestamp 3. And let's say we have another function call 1 colon and colon 2 which means a function call with function id 1 ended at the end of timestamp 2. Now the function can be called multiple times, possibly recursively. So now let's see what is the exclusive, what is the term exclusive time. A function's exclusive time is the sum of exec execution times for all the function calls in the program. For example, if a function is called twice, one call executing for two time units and another call executing for one time unit, the exclusive time would be the sum of these times, which would be 2 plus 1, that is 3. So what do we have to do in this problem? We have to return the exclusive time of each function in an array where the value at the ith index represent the exclusive time for that particular function. So we have to return the array for all the function calls that we are given in this logs array. Fine. So here I'm assuming that you know about, you know, basics about call stack. What is the call stack? And let's see the input and output form. In the input, we will be given the logs array. And in the output, we have to return the exclusive time array. The number of function calls which we can have may go up to 100. So we may have up to 100 function calls in our call stack. While the logs that can be written. So that means we may have 100 unique function calls that we may have while the logs length may go up to 500 and the function id lies from 0 to n minus 1 as i explained the function the unique function calls uh, go up to 100 the timestamp may go up to 10 raised to the power 9 also no two start events will happen at the same timestamp so let's say we have two functions and they cannot start at the same timestamp same goes for the end events each function has an end log for each start log now let's better understand the problem statement using an example. So here, here we have an example which I have taken from the problem section itself. So in this example, we are given the logs array. So, so the n for this particular example is 2. That means we have two unique function calls and so I'm talking about unique function calls. Okay? That means we have two functions which have different IDs. Now the IDs will be from 0 to n minus 1 that is 0 to 1. Now let's see logs array for this particular input test data. Okay, so this is the corresponding logs array that we have for this particular test case. So here we can see that corresponding to this logs array, we have this type of configuration. We can see that the lowest time where the function starts is, is 0, which is the case for function number 0, the function with ID 0, while the largest time where the function may end go up to 6 units of time which is the case for function for function with id 0 so it is a function which runs the longest so hence let's put a time scale so this is a time scale it starts from 0 and ends at 6 so here we can see that the very first element says we have a function with id 0 which starts at timestamp 0 which is denoted here so here we have a function call that means we have a call stack and 
at time 0 and for function id 0 the time for this function would be 0 so this is my call step function with function id 0 will be called at timestamp 0 and it will be pushed to the call step i encounter another function then i encounter another function which has a function id as 1 and it starts at timestamp 2 so here that means function number 0 executes till timestamp 2 and at timestamp 2 another function is called so we have to record the time for which the function number 0 has been executed before i start processing the next i simply calculate the interval for which the function with id 0 has been and that interval would be the timestamp for function number 1 minus the timestamp where the function number 0 has started and which is which we can see that it is 2 for function number 1 and it is 0 for function number 0 that means the function number 0 has been executed for 2 units of time before the function number 1 has been called so for function number 0 so we have our so as we are given in the problem statement we have our we have our exclusive time array so this is my exclusive time array and here i can see that the exclusive time has been calculated to be 2 so this array has to be initialized to 0 initially so it and at this point when the function number 1 is called the exclusive time for function number 0 is calculated to be 2 and now the processing for the function number 1 has been started or the function number 1 is called it is being executed it will be present at the top of the stack as it is given in the problem statement itself so the function with id 1 which started at timestamp fine then i move to the next element where we find the ending timestamp for the function number 1 so here i can see that i have the function number 1 ends at timestamp 5 that means it has to be popped out whenever a function ends it has been executed completely we simply pop it out of this so here the function ends at timestamp 5 but i have to calculate for how much time the function was executing that i can calculate by simply subtracting the ending timestamp of the function 1 from its starting times we know the ending timestamp is 5 while the starting timestamp is 2 which is present at the top of the stack plus 1 so why do we count this plus 1 because the function ends after the fifth fifth unit of time is consumed the function does not end at the start of the fifth unit of time it ends at the end of this fifth unit of time that that's why i'm adding one here which will give me four seconds and hence the exclusive time for function number one is four till now why because it may happen that this function May be called again in the future so i'm simply accumulating the exclusive time for each function where these indices corresponds to the function ids that i have now i'm standing at here and this element is popped out because function number one has been is out it has been executed completely we do not have to process it further then the next element is is the ending timestamp for function number zero the function number zero starts executing again right so I'm simply executing the functions according to the order in which they are called now the function number 0 starts executing again it now the function number 0 resumes here and it will end at timestamp 6 so it will continue from this moment and it will go till the end and it is giving me and the time for this would be and we can see that this time interval is one second you can see Okay, so this function which is function number 0 again executes for one second. Now, since the function number 0 resumed at the, uh, at the end of the fifth second, the time for which it executes till it is ended is one second. So I add this one second to the exclusive time for function number 0. Hence the exclusive time becomes 3 and hence the exclusive array is now 3, 5 and I pop this element out of the stack because I am again ending the function number 0. Now the stack is empty and I have processed logs array and the answer for the test case would be 3, 4. So this is how we obtain our final result from the given set of it. Pretty easy problem. So we don't have to think more much about it if we know how to process the given events or function calls in order. We know that stack data structure is used to process the input in the order it is given. It is explicitly mentioned in the problem statement that all we have to do 
is to just process the given functions in the order they are called fine so there is not much to think about the solution all we have to do is just to follow the steps which are given in the problem statement itself so how do we prepare a working solution for this problem so let's see the implementation of the idea which i explained here so here we have our exclusive time function which takes in the number of functions that we have logs array so this log logs array i simply declare an array of size n so this is the exclusive time array which will store the exclusive times for the given functions then i declare a stack data structure so it is a stack of pairs where the first element in the pair is the function id while the second element in the pair is the starting time for the function starting time or starting time stamp then i declare a previous time variable which i initialize to 0 so this previous time variable will, will be used to find the time interval for which a particular function has been executed for instance here in this case initially the previous time variable is initialized to 0 where the function number 0 is called then here at this time when the function number function number 1 starts executing the previous time variable is updated to 1 so that we can always find the current interval for the function we are executing so whenever the function number 1 ends which ends at the end of the timestamp 5 we simply calculate the interval by subtracting the start time or the previous time which is 1 in this case so 5 minus 1 would give me 4 which is indeed the case here because the function number 1 executes for 4 seconds 2 3 4 5 and here the previous variable is updated to it is updated to 5 because this is the time where the function number 1 ends executing now the function which which was initially executing now become now comes at the top of the stack and resumes its execution function number 0 resumes its for this time interval it was present at the bottom so we can say that this is a halt state for function number 0 because the function number 1 was executed as it is given in the problem statement the function at the top of the stack will be executing now since the function number 1 is popped out at this point the function number 0 starts executing again and hence the previous variable becomes 5 so that I can find the interval for which the function number 0 how do we find that at the end we find the timestamp where the function number 1 ends it is 6 minus the previous time where the function started executing is 5 which will give me 1 second and I add this 1 second for function number 0 so that's why I'm using a previous variable to keep track of the starting time when the function started exit or when the function resumed but then I iterate over the logs array and we know that in the logs we have two elements the first element is the function id which I obtain using this stoi functions so what this function does it simply converts the string till the first column is encountered into an integer so for any log let's say we have log 0 start so for this log the num will store this part of the string as an integer that's the functionality of this stoi function this is a function in c++ same goes for the time variable it stores this part of the string in the form of an integer so now i have my function id and its starting time or ending time this because this part may have start or end now if it is the ending part the function is ending in that case all i have to do is to add the time interval which i have for this particular function so a function was executed and it and it is ending here since it is ending i am simply finding the interval of its execution and i add it to the corresponding position in my answer array now this position num here maps to the function id since the function ids are from 0 to n minus 1 there's no trouble in doing so we can simply map the function ids to the indices of my answer array and that's what i'm doing here and since this function ends executing i pop it out of the so that the next function starts its uh, starts its execution and the previous time variable is updated to the current time where the function num ends plus one now this becomes the previous time so otherwise if it is not the ending if it is the starting of a function 
we are simply starting the execution of a function in that case i have to check if there is already a function in the call stack if it if there is that means that function hasn't start hasn't ended so we have a function which was executing and we simply called another function so we can't pop this previous function and all i have to do is to just add the difference at the time for which that function which was being executed or present at the top of the stack has been executed and that I can simply find by finding the difference between the current time minus the previous and here current dot top dot first maps to the uh, it maps to the id of the function which is present at the top of the stack okay and i push the function which which is starting at this point into my call stack in the form of a pair the first first element is the function id and the second element is the time and i update my previous time to the current time where this new function started in this way the answer array will be prepared which will contain the exclusive time for each function call and finally i return my answer array at the end of this function fine so i hope you got the idea a pretty simple application of stack data structure let's see the time and space complexity which this program so you can see that in this program we are iterating over the logs array let's say it has a size n now this n small n is not same as this large n now I am iterating over the logs array exactly once and, and all the operations which I am performing inside this for loop they are constant time operation therefore the time complexity for this program would be linear that is big of n while the space complexity for this implementation will also be big of n because I am using a stack data it is small n big of n uh, because of the stack data structure which I am using now this n is not same as this n it is rather big of small n why this small n because the function calls that we have in the stack they must have unique ids when and we may have at most n unique ids where this n represents the number of logs that we have for those function calls. okay so this this n is not same as this n. so this is a time and space complexity let's see the implementation let's see the code implementation of the id explain here okay so this is my solution class which contains this exclusive time function which takes in the number of elements which takes in the integer n representing the number of unique function calls that we may have and the logs array i initialize an array also which will store the exclusive times for all the function calls then i declare a stack to store the pairs then i declare a previous time variable which will keep track of the previous time where the current function started or resumed and this stack pair will store the pair of integers so the first integer is the function id and the second integer is its starting time and i iterate over the logs array for the logs array i have i extract two elements the fun, uh, for each element i extract two uh, for each item present in this logs array i extract two elements the first one is the id the second one is the time then i check here if the current log that we are present corresponds to the ending of a particular function if it is not the case so this represents this if it is the case the function with id this has ended its and hence i add its interval of execution into the exclusive time for that particular function and i pop this function call out of the stack because it has ended its while the previous time is updated to the current time plus one otherwise it is a starting time and if the stack is not empty in that case in that case the function which is at the top of the stack has to temporarily stop its execution because a new function has been called and in that case i will add the times i will add the time interval for the function which was executing till now and i will push the new function into the stack while updating the previous time to the current time. in this way the stack is used to compute the answer array Finally, at the end of this function call, I will return my answer. So this is the implementation in C++. Let's see the implementation in other languages. So this is the implementation in Java and this is the implementation in Python language. Okay, so that's all for this video. If you like the video, then hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel while give your feedback in the comments below. I will see you in the next video. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.